Hey friends, you know that book that I have been talking about for months, if you've been with us for just a minute? Well, it is now out in the world available for purchase. It launched this week and we've had this overwhelming response. I've been absolutely humbled by all the people that have ordered this book and are going to be able to read about my purpose journey over the past three years. Part of that involves creating this podcast, why I created this podcast, and what gets me out of bed in the morning, what drives me, what fuels me. You can head over to thepowerprojectbook.com and read all about it for yourself. You can go ahead and order the book over there. And in honor of that book launch, I wanted to do something that was just a thank you to give back to my community because you guys have been so good and so supportive leading up to it. And I realized that so many people would ask me about how, how do you write a book and how do you start a podcast and what would I say and would anyone read my story? And I realized there were a lot of limiting beliefs that are holding women back from pursuing that call on their life. So I thought, how great would it be if we could assemble a panel of different women that I personally know that have been guests on the podcast that would be able to speak into this audience and share their wisdom with all of you. These women are my personal friends in life. They are mentors of mine and they are just a wealth of empowerment, inspiration, motivation, Jesus, everything wrapped into one. They range from life coaches to uh, ministers to business owners, podcast hosts, and speakers and authors. I know that you are going to be blessed by each and every one of them today, just as I have been. The first guest that I am going to bring to you guys on this panel is my gorgeous friend, Tamara Andrus. She is a minister, a personal coach, and host of the Fit in Faith podcast. She brings the absolute joy of the Lord to every subject that she speaks on. So Tamara, I would like for you to just give everyone just a little background about what it is you do and what it took for you to step out in faith for you to overcome some limiting beliefs, maybe a point in time in your life that you could have never imagined doing everything it is that you're doing now and just share that with our audience. Yeah, I think a biggest thing for me was that circa even just five years ago, I would have never anticipated that this would be my career path or that God would have hold of my heart the way that he does now. Uh, I would have always said that I believed in God, but I never knew God until I had no option but to figure out who I was, release all of the titles, release even the roles that I was playing as mom of two toddlers and wife to, I always call him my hot hubby because that's what he is in my phone, Gary hot hubby. (laughs) And uh, I I had to let go of those things because I was spinning out of control, not realizing my own self-identity, my own worth, my own passions. I was literally living that American dream rat wheel. And so when I got off of that, I had to strip myself from titles um, because I had a serial entrepreneur, 20s, Uh, And yet it didn't matter because I was completely empty and completely broken. And so as I came to know the Lord and I dove deeply into my relationship with him and my first ministry, which is my home, my babies, my husband, uh, I started to realize who I actually was and who God had made me all along. And the cool thing is, is even when you're walking out of purpose, God has purpose on everything that you're doing, and he will use all of those things, each of those places, each of those relationships, even even the negative ones, to catapult you into the place of calling, and that's exactly what he did with me. Um, It took about a three-year process of true mental health. We talked about that on our podcast, Brandy, of of really going to see a therapist and and stripping back the lies that, that meant I was broken. Uh, I became an ordained minister during a two-year program and uh, just started loving myself through the lens of my father. And I was, came from a home that 
I didn't always understand that from my own father. And so uh, that is a huge part of my story. Um, and the hugest limiting beliefs for me was worthiness and feeling like when I was stepping out to become a Christian coach for other women, for entrepreneurs, and using that part of my storyline and my passion placement, I felt like an imposter. And we can, I'm sure all of us at some point can unpack what an imposter syndrome is and, and what that doubt can do to you and hinder you from that calling. So I am grateful that it's been um, two years in the making and it doesn't seem like long yet. It feels like eternity. And so know that God can put you into places that you couldn't even know possible in a blink of an eye. And now the titles that are alongside my name, when people introduce me, I'm like, oh, no, no, no. Like, that's not even it. Like, I'm all his. And everything that he's been able to cultivate through my life is literally at his feet and at his glory. Um, so I'm grateful to be in community with women and to be able to do that in the identity as a daughter. Oh, I love that. I think that you always, um, you always put things in such great words and, uh, and, and really inspire others around you. What would you say was your Number one limiting belief when you decided you were going to start your faith journey and you were going to step out and uh, begin, become an ordained minister and begin coaching women and putting it all out there. What was the greatest, uh, the greatest limiting belief you had to overcome? It would definitely be that, that placement of imposter syndrome of thinking mm -hmm. that I wasn't capable um, mm -hmm. or that. God wouldn't have me do that. And is it me saying that I'm raising my hand, saying that I'm called to this, or is God calling me to this and I'm answering and oh. mm -hmm. having to come into this understanding of like looking in the mirror, but looking past the mirror and actually understanding that like, this is, this is Jesus. <laughs> okay. And you each have your own identity of Jesus. And so I think we were even unpacking it as your book launched today woo woo, to Brandy's Power Project book. So excited for you. I already got my copies coming in the mail, prime hopefully. And um, <laughs> we were talking about how you felt like the people closest to you became this inhibiting factor. And that is what happened to me. I felt like what is she going to think? What is my family going to think? What are my best friends going to think? Because they've known me in the before and now they're seeing this after, is it a lie? Is it a facade? I struggled with perfectionism for so long. Is it me trying to be perfect again after already crashing and burning? Yet Jesus is the perfecter of all things. And so that was like just such a struggle. Sometimes it even still is where I have to realize, no, like continue to submit, to continue to hand it over to him. This is not by my name. This is not by anything. I don't need it. There's that song that says, um, I don't need my name in lights. I'm famous in my father's eyes. And, and so often the things that we're doing, all of us in our own um, abilities, in our own time, it's, it seems flashy and it feels like, oh my gosh, she has a podcast. Oh my gosh, she's an author. And it's what well, it seems like it's an aspiring thing. Yet it's not for that. You said it yourself. You're doing it to help and serve somebody else. I don't want to see women crash and burn the way that I did. And so that's where my why comes from. And that's where my heart placement is. And yeah, speaking on a podcast is really fun. And yeah, writing a book and publishing it is really scary. And it takes a lot of work. And being a coach, there's a lot of beautiful places of that. But there's a lot of, of hardship that comes alongside that. We carry a lot. Um, but we get to lean on the father who calls us into those places. Oh, so good. So good. Do you have uh, maybe just, uh, may maybe it's one step, maybe it's three to five steps. Do you have some tangible steps that we can share with our audience tonight about overcoming limiting mindsets and really uh, just answering the call? Yeah, I had written down a few of them. And one, I love this is have you prayed about it as much as you talked about it? Two is to set SMART goals. So SMART stands for specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely. These goals that allow you to actually track your process of self and spiritual, personal, and professional development. 
That way that imposter syndrome won't get in your way because you'll say, I've set this up and this is where I'm going. And this is where God has me go through vision or prayer or promise. And then you can actually reflect back on those places and know, no, that wasn't me. That was by God's grace that got me where I am today. Three is to celebrate your fail forward moments. Y'all, when I say crash and burn, it was not pretty, okay? <laughs> it was not pretty at all. So we can go there another day if you have specific questions or you feel like you are out of standing out of worthiness, but God, God sees you and he knows you and he loves you and you can be victorious even in those fail forward moments. And to surround yourself with glow getters, with other passionistas, because I tried with all my might to be a guy's girl for a majority of my life. And I found myself completely isolated and completely alone. And it is through sisterhood. It is through true sisterhood that we are able to fly and really understand the purpose and heartbeat of the world and the purpose and heartbeat of the kingdom. And so I'm thankful for glow getters like you guys. And lastly, to remember that you are always becoming. And while today might be standing on a mountaintop, there's still more to be achieved. There's still more for God to gift you to more of his veil that he wants to uncover for you. And so I'm looking forward to seeing how you guys continue to become and discover your purpose. That is so good. Those are such great takeaways. I love that. I love the glow getters because I believe that there's a whole lot of uh, glowing being gotten up in here. <laughs> I love that. That's so good. So thank you, Tamara. Thank you so much. I, I am so grateful for that. And um, I'm grateful for your mission and your ministry and speaking into women the way that you do. Next up, I would like to introduce you guys to Ashton Cantu. And Ashton and I had the honor of meeting at an event that was hosted by one of our other speakers that we have on the panel tonight that we will be getting to. Ashton is a transformational life coach and she is so deep, such a deep thinker. I love the way that she can um, manifest. I love the way that she can speak into others and that she can help people take action and move out of the, the stuck place into the actual implementation place. So, hey, Ashton, can you say hi to the audience tonight and give them a little, a little something about you? Hey, what's up, y'all? My intention is, is to just pour into you and to share with you some, some practical ways that you can move through limiting beliefs, um, some practical and spiritual. I believe that we have to pair the two, that we have to pair our God-given power with also the tools that he gives us in our human form. So I want to I wanna share a couple of things that have been really transformational in my own life and uh, help me to move out of that feeling of being stuck or self-sabotage or, um, you know, just like you were saying lies, Tamara, just lies about who I was. So that's my intention. Can you, can you talk to us about your journey, about you stepping into this coaching journey, about this call that you had on your life to really, um, help, help women and people in general move out of being stuck and, uh, what limiting beliefs that you had to overcome personally along the way? Yes. So. I think for me, a lot of the, um, the stories or the lies, they, they started really young about what I was capable of or not capable of. And I started to buy into my lack of worthiness at like probably the age of eight, right? My first grade teacher told my parents I'd never go to college to gear me towards a vocational school. Um, by the time I was 16, I landed myself in rehab. They told me I'd end up one of three places, jails, institutions, or death. I made it to jail a few times, made it you know, through rehab and about got myself killed through a toxic relationship. So there I was, you know, really internalizing all these stories. And although I had the ambition and the heart to serve and I had a lot of drive behind what I wanted to do, I was very goal and achievement driven. The self-sabotage was so real. It was so real. I would get, you know, I would take two steps forward and it ended up 10 steps back because that the second I would trip, right, the, the flood of all of the lies would come in. I'm an F up, you know, I, I, I don't deserve this. Um, I mean, the list goes on. So the limiting beliefs were, were completely outnumbering me in every sense of the way and my ability to even like to cope. So I, I looked for every distraction possible to, to move through that. And it just, it got me nowhere, right? It was just like this, it was a vicious cycle. 
that I was living in for over a decade. And it got really bad. Kind of like you were saying, I had a crash and burn. And I did it a lot. I actually crashed and burned so many times, but I didn't, it didn't wake me up until it, until it did. And it didn't even, it wasn't even like the worst hit that I had taken in life that woke me up. It was really when I saw God move. That's when I started to wake up was when I started to see God pick up my mess in my pieces and start to like put me in position and start to uh, put people in my life that were speaking life into me, that were pointing me back to him, and then also mirroring back to me and reflecting to me who I really was. For most of my life, I didn't have people reflecting to me who I was. They were telling me all of the things that I wasn't, right? Family especially, telling me who, what I wasn't capable of, or you know, just reminding me of the past, rather than helping me to see the possibility of my future. So that was a little bit of the initiation into purpose, right? Your, your pain, and leveraging that pain and, and using it as purpose, taking that mass and using it as a message, being able to leverage all of the things and experiences that you've used and say, well, oh my gosh, if it was, if it was this bad, like, you know, I'm, it can't be in vain. Let's, let's give this as a gift to other people, this insight, this wisdom to help them to move through this. And mo most importantly, understand who they are in God's eyes, because that was the number one block, right? I was confused in my identity. So the identity is a piece that we see over and over and over again when it comes down to mindset coaching and overcoming limiting beliefs. And it truly, we are a panel of believers here. Um, whatever your higher power is that you align with, we, you know, we all have similar beliefs on this panel, but learning that identity and learning not only who you are, but whose you are is such a crucial piece to being able to, because on our own, we sit here and we're like, I can't do anything, right? But when we learn that greater power of who, who we've been created to be, that's when we can fully step into our purpose. Do you have, uh, do you have your one to three or three to five takeaways that you can leave the audience with tonight? Yes. So you use the word submit. I say surrender, but I, I believe that it's like the number one power. Like get out of the way. Right. And that was the first thing that had happened. That's when I saw God moving in my life is when I was like, Oh my gosh, I can't anymore. Like I clearly don't know what I'm doing. So please, please, somebody, anybody help me. And I did that. And I, and I was literally in that moment of full like submission and, and surrender of on my knees, break down like hands in the air, please. I need support. And it flooded in and it just showed me how abundant God was and how much he loved me and how supported I truly was if I had only been awake to receiving that support. So I think surrender, right, and being willing and open to be guided was like my initial way of, over, of moving through loving new beliefs because it just opened up my mind enough for God to do some work. It opened up my heart enough for Jesus to come in and do some spiritual surgery. So just that surrender, I think, is the number one power move. Um, there's some practical things too. Um, when stepping into purpose, you're going to have just your normal human stuff that comes up, right? You're going to have your procrastination. You're going to have your excuses. So one thing that is really powerful is just looking at what it's costing you to stay where you are. You know, we often hold on to the stories, holding on to the story of who you think you are is costing you your purpose, right? So by releasing that and recognizing that it was costing me the impact to say that I'm still this person, like just seeing the contrast of here's my story, here's what I'm buying into versus here's what it's really costing me. And then actioning that as a change, right? Really reframing and rewriting this narrative, the story based on the fact that I recognized what I was losing by still believing it. And that really helps with kind of overcoming the conscious blocks that you have. I think that's so good. And I, I wanted to, I tried to make certain that we all have, we've all brought different experiences, life experiences to the table. And so I want to point out here and you can add on to it. Um, several of us here, you know, some of us are married and have small children. Some are married and have grown children and some are uh, retired or approaching retirement and you're standing in your purpose in your singlehood. And I think it's really important that we point out today that when we're overcoming those limiting beliefs that so often, especially in a faith community, personally, we see that women stand back and wait for, 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 to become a wife, to become a mother before they can answer a call of purpose. So 
that, that woman who's sitting at home right now that's standing in her singlehood that says, look, I'm not waiting for anyone. I'm ready to answer my purpose, my call. What can you give them one, one takeaway that you would give them? Well, what I've found is that when you, when you do step into the, the woman that you know you're called to be, you will attract your mate, right? You'll, you'll attract the, your purpose driven man who's living in alignment with the core values that you have. So it's not about waiting. It's about becoming. It's about choosing to be the woman who's going to attract the type of partner that, that you know aligns with God's path for your life, right? So getting really clear on those values and stepping into them and living, living into them as, as much as possible, I think, is, is going to be it's gonna be a win-win. You're going to end up not only living in alignment in your path and your purpose, but you're going to attract a partner. And that is, that's a, the match to what God wants for you because you're on path. So good. Thank you so much for sharing with us. I really appreciate it. And I think that that conversation is really important for anyone listening right now that is thinking that you can't serve your purpose as a single woman. You can like do it, girl, like put it out there, put the energy out there and follow God's call for your life. Thanks, Ashton. I really appreciate you. So up next, we are going to chat with Miss Demi Austin Thomas. And if, uh, if you are local in the North Texas area, because we do span here across the, the U.S., if you're local in the North Texas area, you have probably seen this ray of sunshine on uh, some of the television shows. She is a parenting coach. She's a TV personality. She, y'all, she brings some fire with her. Hey, Demi, how are you? Hey there. Hi! It's, it's, it's exciting to be here. Thank you so much for having me. I told you I was excited because I brought some little glitter and shimmer for you on my eyes, honey. <laughs> <laughs> I expect nothing less. Nothing less. Yeah. I love the yeah. shimmer. I love the glitter. I love all the joy that you bring every time to the table. If you could give everyone a little background about how you ended up being a parenting coach, a TV personality, and, and what limiting belief you had to overcome to get to that point. Well, um, I think I, 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 it's really shocking to believe that I'm a parenting and family coach um, because I think that it was just God's divine purpose. You know, I, I, was, I grew up as a latchkey kid and I was the oldest daughter. So I was always taking care of everybody. My parents were great people, um, great worker bees, but I suffered um, with that social and emotional connection and feeling like I was worthy or valuable. I can be in a room with uh, people who know me, right? Were kin to me, but they don't really know me. And um, taking care of everybody else, but not taking care of myself. And so I really believe that through this space of parenting, um, it just kind of fell in my lap, to be very honest with you. And I just think because I chose to parent my children differently from the space of what I needed as a child, that it was just God's divine hand. And I had no idea that um, what's happening today in my life would be something that I could never, ever dreamed of. And so um, I'm super passionate about not just parenting, but seeing healthy families healed and whole. And I think because I walked around with a lot of trauma um, in my heart space and walked around feeling like um, I was invisible, that I wanted to make sure that I didn't pass that generational cycle or that generational curse to my children. So it's about rewiring and giving ourselves permission to do things differently. And so I'm just grateful to God. Um, he has literally just paved the way. And I believe that when you take care of his business, he takes care of your business. And I'm a firm believer that all things work together for the good of those who love him and who are called according to his purpose. And whatever looked bad or whatever was indifferent or whatever pain or disappointment that we experienced in our lives, um, it has shaped purpose in our hearts and in our lives. And so I feel like that has been really the bulk of my story. And um, I'm excited to see what God is doing and uh, understand that we don't have to parent perfectly. We parent with purpose by surrendering and knowing that um, 
if we're allowing God to lead us, you know, we should be open to leaving the, a familiar place or what I call a familiar bondage into going into a foreign freedom of what he has for us and for his people. Oh, it's so good. You've all, you always bring the wisdom always. Mm-hmm. So we, we spoke a little about, um, I th- Tamara mentioned it. I believe Ashton mentioned it. This whole, uh, unqualified imposter syndrome. Is this my will or is this God's will? And, uh, I believe that the enemy's, I mean, duh, the enemy's really good at telling us what we can't do at telling us, uh, what we don't need to do. But I think that when we, when we step out and we take a stance, like all of us here have, most of us here are a, a semi- public persona, right? And we, we can get in our heads and we can hear that. Are you doing this for you? Are you doing this for your popularity? Are you doing this to grow your platform or is this kingdom work? And I think that that is a really true limiting belief that we all encounter and um, you being TV personality and all things Demi, I feel like could probably speak to that the best for all of us. Yeah. I mean, that is, I'll be honest with you, like this journey for me has been probably one that has emotionally and spiritually has been very exhausting for me. It is completely being able to disrupt the lies that the enemy has spoken um, over our lives. I think that we also, for me, it is being able to go back, but don't be afraid to go back to start tracing where the lies came from. Realize, did I make an agreement with this lie, to be okay with taking the grip and really dismantling the lie. I think oftentimes for me, that has been the case of wondering if I'm worthy and then spirit, the spirit of comparison <laughs> that, you know, I don't know if everybody else deals with, but that was certainly my issue was the spirit of comparison and really just accepting who God says that I am. And knowing that I'm fearfully and wonderfully made, knowing that I am my own person, I am my own unique self, and giving myself permission again to surrender the lies. I had to do a self-assessment. I think oftentimes what we do is, you know, we, we blame others, but we also have to start accepting responsibility and um, realizing what, what role did I play in this? And being okay with submitting this and truly giving it, completely surrendering it to God and not picking it up. I think you also have to be aware of your relationships. And sometimes that even, you have to uh, go, go into your family, whatever that, your, 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 your husband, your children, you know, your parents. You can't be afraid to go back and start tracing, you know, where the lies started and being able to deal with it. You know what I mean? And I feel like for me, that was very much like what I had to deal with, with my parents and just what I thought about myself that I feel like was projected onto me. Um, At a young age, I was bullied. So again, going back to the lie and disrupting that lie and telling the enemy that those lies, that's not me. That's not who I am. And creating new beliefs about myself. I think that has really been for me, what I've needed to do to be able to move forward in with a healthy mindset. You brought fire. You don't have to parent perfectly. You have to parent purposefully. And then uh, this one spoke to me. Have we come into alignment with the lie? Like that, you, that, that is so important. And I want every single person that is listening to this, that is watching this, that is replaying this to realize that we, we have things along the way. I was told I talked too much all my life and that I was, my voice was nasally and the, the gift that God had given me, which was my voice and speaking and speaking into others. I was afraid of sharing because I had come into alignment with the lie that the way that God created me wasn't to serve the purpose he created me for. And I think one of the things that you said, it's we come into alignment with the lie but we have a decision that we have to make. We don't have to agree. And what, what's happened or what happened for me is that we came in, I came into alignment with it 
and I agreed with it. I believed it. And I took those lies and started applying them to my life. No, you know what I mean? We have to be able to say, where, where did this thing go wrong? And let me un unhandcuff myself from this thing because it's a lie it's not the truth and really being able to embrace our uniquenesses so so what your voice is nasally they told me that i talk too much in school honey you better you better love yourself and oftentimes what happens is that we are looking for love and we're looking for acceptance and we're looking for approval and we're looking for validation from people it starts with you believing what you believe about yourself and what God has already said, who you are, embrace your uniqueness, embrace who he's calling you to be. And so what? You're going to be different. You are supposed to be, you're chosen, you're set apart. And I think that for me was the, uh, the, the I, for me, it was a stronghold because I felt like I needed to look holy you know, because I was a minister and I needed to sound a certain way. And God was like, you know what, what you're doing is you're basically telling me that I didn't do a good job. You're basically saying you don't agree with what I, the pathway I have for you and what I say about you that's unique and what I love about you. You're saying you don't want that. You want this. So I just think we can't be afraid to disrupt the lies of the enemy and to give them back take the labels off and to really embrace our uniqueness and our identity and who we are and who God says that we are. Demi, I knew, I knew you were going to take us to church tonight. I knew it. And it's so good. It is so important. Thank you so much for sharing because it really is like, it, it is so crucial that you realize that there comes a point where you have to put God's opinion of you and God's call for your life higher than your kids, than your husbands, than your moms, than your friends. When you get to that point and you have to be really true in, in the submission or the surrender, like Ashton talked about, and just like the, the imposter syndrome where we have to really believe who he says we are, right? All of these things these ladies are telling you today, when you realize that that call that he's placed on your life, his opinion of you, it's greater than anyone's, anyone's. And that's huge. That's a huge limiting belief that you have to, you have to shift into a growth mindset, into a responsible mindset to accept. So thanks, Demi. I appreciate you sharing with us. You're incredible. You know, I love your face so much. I love the joy you bring to my life. And up next, we have Alice Egerton. And Alice is the host of Fulfilled After 50 and the author of the book by the same name, she speaks about really stepping into purpose at a, a later stage in life. And oftentimes we hear women say that it's too late for me. Oh, I wish I would have done that back then. And she is the epitome of y'all. She's going to stand right where she is today and say, not, it's not too late. I'm not done yet. I'm running hard. Y'all come run with me. So, Hey, Alice, can you say hello to everyone today? Hi, everybody. Super excited to be here. Thank you so much, Brandy, for just inviting me on, just, just being surrounded by other Christian women. I feel, you know, like Thessalonians 5.11 says, you know, we are to encourage one another and raise each other up just as we are doing right now. And so I think it's so powerful for us to come together and raise each other up and encourage one another because life is hard and we all have our struggles, right? And it's all, um, it's all about really uh, life happening for us, not to us, right? And um, so I, I would love to open it up a little bit, Brandy, on what Demi just touched on and really that that is the basis of fear. And I think fear comes into play a lot on those limiting beliefs. And when we succumb to fear, we really miss out on God's blessings he has for us on the other side of fear. And so for me, I, I want to like wrap it up really, really short because I can give you a long version of what, how this has come about for me in my life and the period I am 
at. So I am fulfilled after 50. I have a Facebook group fulfilled after 50. I have a podcast fulfilled after 50 and I have a book. (laughs) So um, I also have a subscription box service that caters to those women fulfilled after 50. And 50, it's not a magical number. Okay. It wasn't something that happened to me at 50, but it was when my last child left home. And I fell into the pits of depression. I fell into the pits of just losing myself, losing my identity. I felt like my purpose had left. Um, I was that parent that was with their kids through everything. And I had a failed first marriage, which they were both by. I got sole custody of my kids. And it was the the two, the really the three of us for a long time. And then I met the man that God really had for me. And we've been married 19 years now, but during that pit of um, sadness, loneliness, um, sometimes we lose what God has for us. But sometimes, you know, we have to know that God puts events in our life for a purpose and a reason. And I have been a hygienist for 35 years and have retired this year from that career because of the calling that he has placed in my life. And, you know, we can all have jobs. And this is what I tell my 27 year old and Demi, I, you know, I saw that you were with a particular station and my daughter was a producer at Fox News in Philly for three years, Fox 29. She just left there. But um, through raising my kids, I forgot who I was. And so I was a person before I was a mom. And I feel like God calls us for our purpose in different seasons. And the purpose in a season of mommyhood was raising them to be faith-fearing, successful adults that could lead in a community as well. And then I had to figure out, God, you are calling me more than what my career is because your career leads to your retirement, right? But your calling you never retire from. And so I knew that there were so many women that were reaching that empty nest syndrome that they had the same kind of loneliness, depression, and anxiety that I was feeling. But there was no community. And there was no community for that Christian woman that we know that God has more for us. But how how do we know what he has called us to be? And so I organized Fulfilled After 50 in the, in the midst of, I knew that God was calling me for more, but I was fearful. I was fearful to step into that. And I was fearful to step on a stage to speak of that. But I knew that I had to step into his faithfulness and help others along this journey that I was going through myself. And so then um, I wrote the book Fulfilled After 50 with a partner, and it's basically my journey of my life, and it's uh, the journey of giving women. I also do in-person women's retreats. It was a tool to give them that I learned for myself how to come out of the pits of loneliness. Because you can be alone and it's okay to be alone with yourself. You, you want to love yourself and be okay with being alone, right? But loneliness, guys, they say it's equivalent to smoking 15 cigarettes a day. And it creates so much disease in your body. And so through just pouring myself out to these other women and giving them a safe community, I knew what God was placing on my heart. And so, you know, sometimes we become just paralyzed and analyzing everything that we can't move forward with goals that we have for ourselves either. 
And sometimes when God places in our lives somewhere where we start, it's not where our journey is supposed to end. And so where I started my career in dental hygiene, I knew that he was calling me for something more. And that calling is now to tell other women that even though you're 50, you're just beginning. And I think our limiting beliefs come in where we feel that we don't have the competence to learn a skill that maybe that needs to be learned. And so, you know, and I had to do a lot of personal growth, guys. I had to read a lot. I really had to journal. Um, Journaling, if you do not journal, journal, journaling for me is the way for just a healthy mindset. I have to start out every morning with my devotion. I read and then I journal what I write about. And then I give my women a journal prompt every morning. Because if we do not set the day out in a positive mindset, we let that day just overcome us. And so, you know, my action steps really brandy to give everybody is really what I went through myself because sometimes it gets overwhelming. We set out these goals. We don't know how to achieve these goals. We think of these big things and how do we accomplish it? So I really just want to give five action steps that it helped me to get to where I am now. And that first one was I have to write down my goals every single day. If I don't write down my goals, I let that day run me and at the, it's five o'clock in the afternoon and my day has been chaotic and I've got nothing done. And so I, you know, I teach a lot on morning routine and how I go about my morning routine, but write down 10 goals that you want to achieve in a 12 month period. It's so important that we write our goals down every single day. If you don't have any goals, that means you're not growing and you're dying inside. When my kids crossed that stage with their college diploma, I said, do not stop learning today. You've got to keep learning every single day, learn something new, keep growing, keep impacting. And the the second most important thing is, is to pick your most important and impactive goal. Last year, 2019, was writing that book. That was one of my most important goals, and I set out a timeline for it. And then the the third thing is to create a deadline for that major goal, because if you go with a goal without a purpose and a destination, you won't get there. And then the, the fourth thing is make a list of all the things you need to do to achieve that goal. Because if you just go about it aimlessly, it's not going to come about. We can have our vision boards. We can, you know, visualize it. But you have to do the steps. Because God says he has the plan. He already has the plan for your life. But you got to take the steps to get there. And so you have to map that out. And then the fifth and last thing is to commit to it every single day. Some days I get up and I might not be as motivated as I was yesterday because life hits. We're all human and life is going to affect us. And if, if we're scrolling through social media and we're seeing everybody's highlight reels, what is that doing to us? So it's like you have to commit every single day to that goal to get you there. And that's how I've gone about um, several businesses that I have now. I love that you you speak about having to pivot and go through a divorce and a new relationship and your kids leaving the nest because I, whether I am coaching women in life or I am working with uh, traffic survivors that I mentor, the same thing happens. And oftentimes it is, my kids have left the nest. I don't know what my purpose is. I never realized my purpose. I went through a divorce and realized my purpose had been that of being a wife up until now. And so I think that for us to all realize that it's a constant evolution, it's a constant journey, 
it's constant daily growth. Like every single person that is on this panel tonight, I assure you is doing the work every single day to show up for ourselves, to pour into ourselves, to be real intentional with God about who he created us to be. And, uh, there's, there's no way. I mean, it's just exactly like you told your kids, we can't ever stop growing. The second we stop growing, we just start dying. And, God didn't put us on this earth to, you know, eat bonbons and play a few rounds of golf at Palm beach. Like, I mean, sure. That's great. But, uh, let's, let's make sure that we're growing and we're doing the work that he's put us here for and that we're pouring into others. So thank you so much for sharing that. I hope that you guys enjoyed this conversation that we had today. I know that I'm honored every single time that I am in conversation with any of these women. If you did, can I ask a favor? Would you hop over to iTunes or Spotify, wherever you're listening to this show? Give us a review. Give us a rating. We would love five stars. And also, we would love for you to get your hands on the Power Project book so that you can start taking your own steps toward your very own purpose journey. You should come hang out with us in our private Facebook group where we have a launch team assembled and we're sharing everything that we really love about the Power Project book. That's over on Facebook. It is The Power Squad. You can look for us on The Power Project page. As always, I can't wait to chat with you next week. But until then, go out and live your best purpose-filled lives.